I have always been in a never-ending struggle with Tim. Ever since we were little. I was five when we first met at a birthday party. My birthday party, actually. He was just one of those kids from the neighborhood that my mom invited because she was friends with his parents. But Tim turned out to want the spotlight for himself. So when the cake came, Tim blew the candles out, grabbed a handful of the cake with his grubby hands, and stuffed his face full of cake before it could even reach me. Ever since then, Tim has been trying to ruin my life. Hi there, I'm Devin, and this is the story of how my bully and I teamed up to get back at the girl who cheated on us. I hated how Tim kept going to the same schools I would go to. Although, to be fair, we lived a block away from each other, so it made sense. It's just that sometimes, I wish his family would move somewhere far, far away from me. Tim loved being the center of attention, and to achieve that, he became a bully. Tim was a tiny boy, so he couldn't very well pick on just anyone in school. So who does he pick to be his number one target? Me, of course. I was quiet, shy, and didn't have many friends. So if some kid decided to make my life hell, who would stand up for me? I couldn't very well fight back. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. First, because if I cause any trouble, Tim could simply run to his mom, who would then talk to my mom, and then I'd be in a world of trouble. And mostly, I couldn't fight back because I'm a total dork, who would probably break my own wrist if I even so much as block a punch. So, I endured years of Tim picking on me. And when the other bullies saw how much of an easy target I was, they too began to pick on me. It was tough. Most days, I would go home with muddy or torn clothes, and my mom would always give me an hour-long sermon about not being too rowdy at school, about how much clothes cost and how the stains I get on my clothes were impossible to get out. One day, Tim was chasing me through the woods behind the school because he wanted to steal my essay so he could pass it off as his own when I tripped over something. That something was a person's leg. A girl's leg. It quickly dawned on me that she tripped me on purpose, and I felt I'd sunk to a very embarrassing low. Not only were the bullies at school bullying me, now, a tiny girl who looked like she was a couple years my junior was picking on me too. What? What? Why would you do that? Why'd you trip me? She placed a hand over my mouth and gestured for me to keep silent. Shh, he's gonna hear you. Come here. She took my hand and pulled me down, and then I realized what she was doing. She was hiding me. Erica pulled me close. She made me squeeze into the small cave that the massive tree's roots made. We sat there for a few minutes. My heart was racing. Every time I heard Tim's footsteps get closer, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. And then, Erica picked up a rock and threw it far. As soon as it hit the ground, Tim ran after it. I've got you now, Devin! Don't think you can run away from me! As soon as we were sure that Tim was out of the woods, Erica and I burst out laughing. Did... did he really just fall for that? Haha, <laughs> everyone at school knows Tim's not the best in the intelligence department. I mean, he literally just ran after that rock like a dog. I'm not gonna enjoy the part after, when he realizes I've given him the slip. Eric and I spent the afternoon together, skipping school and escaping Tim's wrath. She took me to the mall and we watched movies. And then after, she took me to her house, where we spent the evening talking about everything under the sun. I got to meet her parents. It felt like a whirlwind romance. We'd only just met and I was already meeting her parents. A week later, Erica asked me to be her boyfriend. I was over the moon. Me? Dorky? Wallflower? Certified loser? Devin? Get a girlfriend? And she asked me? I was having the best time of my life. Every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, Erica and I would spend afternoons together, just bunking off school and doing whatever. Before I met her, I never so much as littered. Now, I was missing class and lying to her teachers. I felt so cool. Something bothered me about all of it, though. For those three days in a week, I spent a lot of time with Erica. Even late at night, we would text each other until one of us falls asleep. But on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, it was complete radio silence. I would text her and would receive no reply. If I do call her, it would go straight to voicemail or she'd inexplicably screen my call. I tried to bring this up when we were on a date and she just brushed it off as if she didn't hear me. I was so confused about what she did when she wasn't with me. Until one day... When I got home from a movie date, and my mom was waiting for me at the door. Where you've been? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I forgot to text you. I, uh, d debate team. We had a meeting and it kind of ran a bit long. Sorry, I should have called. Debate team, huh? Because I was just at your school. The principal called me in to tell me your grades are slipping, and you've been missing school saying you were sick. In fact, he showed me a few sick notes that I apparently wrote. I was grounded for a month. That was when I saw her. Erica was walking down a street that evening. 
I heard her laughter, and I immediately looked down from my window. I'd recognize that laugh anywhere. And then, I froze. Holding her hand and giving her a kiss on the cheek was my all-time arch nemesis, Tim. My world began spinning. How could she? How dare he? Was I in some weird parallel universe where my girlfriend was Tim's girlfriend? What is happening? I didn't think. I ran down the stairs, and despite my mom screaming at me that I wasn't allowed outside after school, I burst through the door, stood on the street, and screamed. What the heck do you think you're doing with my girlfriend, Tim? They spun around, and both had the look of utter surprise on their faces. I've got them now, I thought. Caught them red-handed. But Tim just laughed. Your girlfriend? Haha, <laughs> don't kid yourself, Dev. My Erica would never even give you the time of day. No girl would ever date you. Are you... Are you off your meds or something? Erica, tell him! Erica turned a deep shade of red, and when Tim saw, he registered what was happening. Erica? What is he saying? Erica shot me a very angry look, and just started walking away. We tried to call her back, but she just kept going. I didn't hear from her for weeks. And then, one afternoon, I came home to find Tim waiting for me at our door. It turned out, Erica ghosted him as well. And when we got to talking we realized that Erica had been dating us at the same time. That explained why she was always so distant on some days. Turned out, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, my girlfriend was Tim's girlfriend. We formed a plan. Suddenly, our differences were put aside for our goal. We both felt so betrayed, so mad that Erica would do something like that, that the two rival boys became a team, and we had one objective, to exact our revenge on Erica. What made us even more intent on punishing her was when we found out that Erica was seeing a new guy, some senior who was on a football team. We would watch them at school, holding hands and kissing in front of everyone. It hurt, but it didn't matter. I wanted to see her exposed for who she truly was. Tim and I found out that we weren't Erica's first victims. There were a lot of us. And when I heard their stories, it suddenly made sense. It made sense why every time I opened my wallet, there was less and less money whenever Erica and I would go out. Every single one of the boys that Erica has dated, she's stolen from. With the help of all the boys who wanted revenge on her, we set a trap. We waited for the school fair, when everyone and their parents would be there. Tim pretended to bump into Erica's boyfriend. He emptied his wallet and slipped a marked bill inside. From there, it was just a matter of waiting for her to take the bait. Tim saw it first. Erica reached for her new boyfriend's wallet while he was busy ordering drinks. Erica's parents were right there, and she must have nerves of steel to do that while they're right in front of her. As soon as she slipped the bill in her pocket, Tim and I moved in for the kill. Hey, Evan, sorry to barge in like this, but I think your girlfriend might have something of yours. G good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Harris. For a second, I wondered how many of her boyfriends Erica introduced to her parents. Her parents looked so scandalized when we finally told them what their daughter had been doing. Evan looked like he was ready to throw down. We were making such a scene that kids and their parents were now starting to watch. But we weren't going to back down. We had our proof. If you don't believe us, check your wallet. And then, check our pockets. Wh why would I let you check anything? That's an invasion of my privacy. More and more of the boys she had dated and stolen from stepped up. And when there were more than ten of us, demanding for her to show what's in her pockets, Evan finally dug into them and fished out a bunch of bills. One of them was marked. Evan read out what was written on it. I stole this from Evan's wallet? The videos from that afternoon spread like wildfire. Erica wasn't seen at school for a week, and when she came back, she begged Tim and me to take her back. Please, please, you have to help me. Evan broke up with me. Everyone hates me and they're calling me a klepto. If you just take me back, they'll see that it's just a misunderstanding, right? You, you guys can share me. Tim and I just laughed. Share you? So you can take our money? No thanks. Tim and I are going to the arcade. I'd rather lose my cash to a claw game than to your grubby hands. And that's how I ended up being friends with my bully. Please don't forget to share this podcast on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and so on. Thanks for your support. Check out our YouTube channel by clicking the link in this episode description. And also, kindly please rate and review this podcast by...